Recently, I've been able to have a lot of conversations about what makes a great camera brand, what makes a great camera, and more importantly, how do photographers be great if their camera system can't exceed and excel with them? Even though I used to believe there is no one best camera system, through some conversations I've had on Instagram, through some conversations I've had on the comments, I'm pretty sure that there is just one that is above everything else. It scratches or checks off all the marks for every other uh, photographer, whether it's in wedding, sports, hobbyists, um, street photography, and I feel like I should give them their flowers and then give an apology to the people that I've talked to. I will admit that as someone who has taken photos for 12 years, both professionally and as a hobby, I have kind of gotten you know, stubborn in my ways. I see things a certain way, and if it wasn't for these conversations, I wouldn't have had my eyes, let's say, opened up to the way that people actually view photography now and what it what goes into a purchasing decision. What's your camera brand and how does it stand out amongst other photographers? Um, can your lens go to 1.2 and 1.4? Things like, um, you know, will you get clout off it? If you take a photo and post a photo of your camera and say getting work done, are people going to say that they want your camera? Things like this that I guess I haven't really taken a look into, but I'm starting to understand it's really what matters when you put your finger on the pulse of the photography zeitgeist. So in the future, when you're trying to figure out what camera's best for you, remember this, I-D-G-A-F. And again, I'm mad enough to admit and apologize for some of the things that I did in my last video. I wasn't trying to come at Leica and say that there was anything wrong with them. Just for my workflow, I didn't feel like it worked for the look that I was trying to get and the things that I was trying to do. And now I understand that was wrong. You should never sell your Leica, trade your Leica, do anything custom to your Leica, anything like that, because Leica is a tool that is meant to be used by the best of the best. I was recently um, brought up to speed with what Leica shooters are by a young gentleman who has chosen to remain anonymous, um, who let me know that Leica shooters don't talk a certain way, don't dress a certain way, um, they don't act a certain way, they are very classy. And as someone who unfortunately has not possessed all of those things while shooting, I realized that maybe it was best that I sold my Leica for these things, and I also realized that the Leica I own right now probably shouldn't be in my hands if I'm not able to carry that mantle per se correctly. And then it gets into image quality, and I'm starting to understand there's a threshold on image quality and how good you can get. Um, of course, I got the GFX 50R without looking into these things, and there's two things that I've been brought up to speed that should always happen if you're a photographer. Number one, if you're a photographer and you're buying a product to primarily take stills, you can't overlook the video section. If your camera can't do 8K, if your camera can't do 4K 120, you're kind of behind in your stills work. How are you going to be able to put yourself out there for um, videography that you don't offer along with your stills work. And more importantly, whenever it comes to discussing specs with other people, it's going to look really, really bad. And again, whenever I talk about image quality, not just video, but for stills, there is a threshold. Once you get above the full frame format, it's obvious that it doesn't matter. I'm coming to learn that you don't need that when you can spend a lot of money on a high megapixel full frame camera. See, I got my GFX camera with all the accessories and stuff like that. It was listed at $1,750. And if I would have known that I could have gotten a high megapixel Sony or Canon camera somewhere around maybe 25 to $4,000, I, I probably would have made that choice then because I also didn't understand what price and how that reflects in how professional a photographer that you are. Yes, there's a price gap, but you can't really put a price on the professional look of these cameras. And again, how does it make you look in front of other photographers? Portfolios being for your clients and being able to be used as a reference for your clients is out in portfolios so that other photographers can critique your work is actually in. Previously, I was under the assumption that because my 65 millimeter 1.4 lens on GFX gives me a 50 millimeter field of view, and that's the look I was going for, that that would be enough to be able to justify my purchase for what I got. I got that lens for $399. But then someone brought me up to speed. I could actually, with a 50 millimeter 1.0, which the ones that I saw online from like Canon and their EF lens, 51.0, et cetera, being around 23 to $3,500. I, I could get the exact same look with that lens at $2,500, $3,500 that I'm getting with my $399 lens. And when you talk about feeling stupid, 
I felt absolutely dumb. I used to have the idea that image quality and again, durability and reliance and performance meant a lot more to me than what they do today. And it's a mistake that I made, again, just being stuck in my ways and stubborn, but being able to admit these things doesn't mean that you were always wrong or that you were a bad person. It just means that I'm strong enough to be able to say that you guys, my B, I messed up. So with that being said, I wanna go over what actually makes a good camera. And this has been from the viewers like yourself in the comments and in my Instagram DMs explaining to me what makes a good camera? What makes a great camera system? More importantly, what makes a camera system that makes you look professional? There are five pillars, and I think everyone will agree that these are the things that matter the most. Number one is going to be image, and not image like image quality or how do the photos look, because every camera takes good photos. But what does your image look like when you have that camera in hand? What are people gonna say? What are people gonna think? Are people gonna think you're broke? Are people gonna think you're a beginner? Are people gonna think that you're a guy who gets, I don't know, 365 weddings a year, etc., and you're crushing it on YouTube? What are people gonna think? Now, there's a whole bunch of cameras for this. Listen, I'll admit, Fujifilm, not high up on the list. Nikon, Panasonic, not high up on the list. But when you get to the, you know, kind of supreme brands like the Sony, the Canon, the Leica, things really start moving the needle. If you're shooting Olympus, just throw that bitch out the door. Uh, that doesn't matter anymore. For this one, I'll give the point for Leica because I'm starting to understand that when you own a Leica, it means that you own a certain level of prestige. But right behind there, I will say that I heard a lot from Canon photographers on why Canon is the best. And I gotta say, they made a lot of really, really good point. The next thing is durability. And you may be thinking, D, isn't that what you already like? The idea of how long can this thing keep on going, take a beating, go even harder? Um, you know, what's the uh, shutter life expectancy, etc." I did think that, but durability in the way that we think about things now, the way that I'm starting to think about it, kind of just means how long can that camera sit on the shelf and still be functional whenever you want to take a photo every once in a while. I'm starting to learn that cameras for more than anything are accessories and things that aren't meant to be used for a job, work, or anything. They're meant to be something that you can show off to others, maybe put in a display case or just be able to show off every once in a blue moon and put in your Instagram story saying, getting to work click to link with me. And this could be for any brand. People do this with their Fujifilms, their Panasonics, their Sonys, their Nikons, their Leicas, etc. They're just nice shelf candy. And every time you wanna pick them up and take them out for a spin, you gotta make sure not to use them too much because you don't want to make that paint chip off. And that's another thing. How durable is the paint and how new can you keep it looking? That's a big deal. Number three, and I actually heard this, is how gangster is that camera? Is it an OG camera? Does it make you look tough? Now, I've heard that there are a lot of cameras that don't look good. Nikon's cameras look kind of ugly and lame. Panasonic just looks like it's doing too much. Of course, Fujifilm cameras are just little toys and playthings, and Sony's cameras just have a bad grip and the colors are still bad, I guess. They just ported everything over from the a7 III and we're still using the exact same thing. Those cameras are ugly and they're not gangster, but when you carry a Leica, when you carry a Canon, you better believe that people notice you and they know that that guy is not meant to be messed with. Number four is accessibility. And I don't mean how accessible is it for everyone. I mean, how hard is it to get that camera? What's the price point to entry? One of the biggest things that I heard people complaining about was the fact that Leicas are too readily available now. Too many people are able to buy Leica cameras and therefore it kind of messes with the prestige because people like me or a couple of my friends are able to buy these cameras whenever they used to only be held for people of a different level of esteem is the way that it was explained to me. Now, I also include in this lenses, how affordable are the lenses? If they're affordable, it's not good. Panasonic, you're out. Olympus, you're out. Fujifilm, you're out. That's no good. Nikon has third party, you're out. Sony G Masters, Leica M Glass. Um, Canon, you guys are in. Not only are you, some of you blocking third party lenses from coming into your system, but some of you guys have the craziest price lenses with not that really big of a step up from the thing before, but you know what? It just looks damn good. A lot of people are talking about the X100V and the X100VI and the price point for that and everyone trying to scalp them, but that's just an inflated 
market. If those cameras weren't there, Fujifilm prices would not have soared. And so because of that, we can't include them here. So again, the accessibility, the less accessible it is to everyone around you, it has to mean the more professional they are. More G Master badge lenses, more Suma Luxes, more L glass. Those are the things that separate you from the common poor folk. And number five is fun. How fun can a camera be? And I was gonna give this to Fujifilm because everyone loves their simulations and you know being able to shoot them the way they shoot them, but I've recently learned that that's actually incorrect. What makes a camera system fun is being able to make fun of other camera systems. Of course, everyone can bag on Nikon. Fujifilm and Olympus have small sensor sizes and who needs medium format? It's not even a full frame format. It's, it's just medium sized. And you know, you could go with Leica right here, but you're not allowed to have fun with Leica. Again, Leica is for certain people that unfortunately aren't the only ones who get to own them anymore. It's for people with more esteem, people that are more proper, people that look and act a certain way. And of course, again, whenever it comes to having fun, Sony people have a little bit too much fun and their colors are horrible, they're really bad and someone told me that they heard from a friend that their lenses are absolutely trash as well. And so unfortunately, just on the way the game plays, there's nothing else to do but award this also to Canon. So for my studies and my understanding and tallying everything together, it seems like if you really want to be a successful photographer, Leica, Canon, those are the two you absolutely have to own. The autofocus is great on Canon, the prestige is great on Leica, and even more than that, other people will think that you're great when they see your camera. You'll be able to stun on everybody. So in the future, when you're trying to figure out what camera's best for you, remember this, I-D-G-A-F. That's gonna be the thing that you go with. Again, I, D, G, A, F. That's what I'm gonna live my life by from now on whenever I pick out any camera I want. If you're interested in my GFX 50R, I'm starting to realize that was the bad choice for what I wanna do, so I'm actually gonna be selling that along with all my lenses. I'm gonna be looking to upgrade my Fujifilm camera to a Sony, I think it's an FX3, and uh, some of their lenses. I'm going to be shooting more film. Um, I didn't get into that, but I can get into a later video because that will help me a lot because you know people that don't shoot film like myself never shot film in my life. We don't really understand what it takes to make a great image or what it takes to work on that image or make that image come to life. So because of that, um, even though I've been developing my whole life, I'm going to actually get into and relearn how to develop film so that I can just be a better photographer. For my stills, I'm starting to understand that I could just get a high megapixel Canon, a high megapixel Sony, and probably be just fine. And investing in a G Master lens, um, 50, millimeter, 50 millimeter 1.2 will be close enough to the look I wanna get to. Um, and they've always got some things that I could adapt uh, in order to make that happen. So those are, those are some of the things that I'm gonna do. And I think it's gonna be best for me, best for my business, and best for the people around me. I still wanna give you guys great answers and great tips on photography gear and things like that, but I'm glad that I'm able to do it now from this perspective of actually knowing what makes a good camera brand and what makes a great photographer. So with all that being said, I really do appreciate everything you guys have done for me. Remember, it doesn't matter your work. It matters how you look when you show up to work to other photographers that are watching you work. Long gone are the dumbass days, I'm kind of glad of it, of actually putting pen to paper per se whenever it comes to um, being a good photographer. It's not about does your work actually show up and are you just running your mouth, but can you look cool while doing it? Can you gatekeep from everyone else? And can you get something that is less accessible? The more rare your setup is and the more things you have on there, gadgets, etc., the better you're gonna be. I believe in you guys. I believe in everything. This video is sponsored by Squarespace or whatever. Have a good one. Happy April 1st.